Okay, so I'd like to uh, welcome everybody to the June 1st negotiations meeting. We Last we spoke, we'd intended to um, go over uh, salary proposals and... Okay, so I'd like to uh, welcome everybody to... <laughs> salary proposals and a few other uh, adjustments to extra duty or special salary. Uh, unfortunately, Hammer isn't here today. Um, so I don't know that we'll be able to hit like a tentative agreement, but we can at least uh, make our case or make our proposals. So I'd first like to start with um, what we're thinking about as far as uh, salaries go. Um, one of the things that we have looked at is <clears throat> we looked at the base salary from 10 years ago, from 2013. Um, we picked 2013 because a decade's a nice you know, round number. It's also, uh, incidentally, when Holly and Kessler began, <laughs> so it just seemed like a good number. Anyway, 10 years ago, the base salary was uh, $36,600. Uh, if you put that in 2013 dollars, and then you calculate for uh, April's of latest of this year, the base to be uh, the same as it was 10 years ago would have to be $48,215. This is the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. It's uh, the official U.S. government website for um, CPI inflation. So what we're proposing, I mean, and, and I mean, we can talk about how the last few years inflation has been higher and that kind of thing, but I, but I really think that when we point out that our teachers are making less than they did 10 years ago, then it kind of puts it in like a pretty quick and easy, un, easy to understand concept as to inflation's been really high, you know. So we're uh, proposing um, we're not to make any adjustments in the indexing or uh, columns, but to just make the base 48,250, which is slightly above this 48,215, but that's mostly because it's a round, nice round number, and we like that. Just a quick question. Um, so you said, okay, so the 48,250? Is that right? Correct. And then in lieu of step and column, or that's in addition to? And I just, you kind of mentioned it, but I didn't get it. Oh, uh, no, I just meant like we wouldn't make any changes to the how the indexing works or anything like that. We would just raise the base. We'd still do column movement. I mean, yeah, step and column movement just because, right, because otherwise that'll, because the, these steps were meant to be like years of experience, and if we freeze that it kind of messes that up so we would rather keep that going too but just raising the base so that it's in line with about where it was 10 years ago you know what i mean so have you and hammer met at all to put together your little spreadsheet deal that you all normally bring to the table with you do you have any idea like what type of dollar amount is tied to that number by chance, the I haven't met with Hammer to um, go over like that to make sure that like what I what we have is accurate. But um, I, I uh, am more than happy to do that uh, with him and, and get that squared away for next time. But uh, just
questions, comments about that at this point? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, next item uh, on page. 22, 23 of the negotiated agreement, it's student activities, student or activity supervision, uh, stuff like uh, cafeteria supervision, crosswalk, parking lot, et cetera. Uh, I believe right now that's paid at $14 an hour, which is less than like what, what McDonald's pays its employees, so we feel like it's inadequate, but it's also, in, in practice, it's been very difficult to get people to take those positions because, I mean, if you cover lunch, like at the high school, that's, if, they're, if they generously round it up to half hour, that's $7. I mean, that's 35 bucks a week and you give up your lunch the whole time. Like nobody really wants to do that. So um, we're proposing uh, $25 an hour and then paid at no less than one full hour. Correct, and what that'll do is, uh, I mean, that'll make sure that like our time is valued, right? Tammy, do you know of an instance where that would be happening of just 10 minutes? No, I'm just getting clarity on what you're asking, but like um, in elementary, we don't do the lunch duty. So that's a high school thing really only. And so then at the, okay, secondary is so, so, but like you might have um, a crosswalk duty that might be 15 minutes. Like it's not, not necessarily 10, but just clarity of that. It's not always a 25 minute or a 35 minute thing. It could be 10, 15 minutes in a chunk in, in elementary world. So that's, that was. Yeah, the cafeteria at lunch day was just an example. It wasn't the only thing that we thought about. But. Anyway, we felt that this would be um, more, uh, more worth a teacher's time. They're more inclined to do these things if the pay isn't uh, woefully low. Any other questions on that part? Okay. Uh, as, as you know, uh, class cover has been uh, a challenge, uh, and, and increasingly so over the last few years. Um, <clears throat> there is a teacher shortage in our area, so we have a whole lot of uh, substitutes covering uh, as long-term subs uh, and it's been uh, currently the pay to cover uh, class cover I think is $18 an hour 18 thank you 1875 and that's just not again it's not worth the time we lose uh, in planning that we're gonna have to make up later anyway so teachers are, are uh, reticent to um, give up their time for 18 bucks. And so what we're proposing to make, uh, to try to address you know, two issues, the one is that we're underpaid, but then also uh, to try to help with the uh, you know, teacher shortage, the class coverage shortage, I mean, we, we, I had one of my classes that was just kind of 
made to hang out in a stairway because the administrator was nearby and that's there wasn't anyone to cover my class when I was gone one time. So it, it's just, it's getting bad. And so we're trying to figure out you know, ways that we can help. Uh, so our proposal uh, is you, you get paid your hourly rate. So wherever you are in the salary schedule, your hourly rate uh, that you would get, you get paid that to cover classes. And again, no less than uh, an hour, uh, hour and a half for high school because they're longer. But uh, and the red, I think we would like to strike that. Um, I'm going to go strike through on that. If I can remember where, I'll text it. Correct, we're removing the red and adding the yellow. Or at least editing to this, the yellow. And for clarity, the part of the reason we wanna strike the red is that it's been a little inconsistent. Um, if a teacher, um, I think at the middle school it was, if they put in that they covered this class, they got paid for an hour. If they put in the actual time of that class, then they got paid 40 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever it is for a middle school class. And so some were getting a full hour of pay and some were getting not, just depending on what they wrote down on the sheet. And so we just want to make it, you know, we're just you, if you cover a class, you get paid for at least an hour and hour and a half to high school because it's longer. Make it simple. Uh, that's, that's really what's behind the uh, strike through. I guess one clarification. So where it says dual coverage time, so is that leading into when students are split up between several teachers for coverage as well? So all three of the, like if, if seven kids were put in three different classrooms, each one of those teachers would receive no less than one hour pay for their current rate to have those seven extra kids in their room? Yes. So then, yeah, we would need to go back to, I think, C. I think there, that's actually covered in a different area currently elementary teachers accepting students from another classroom not to exceed 10 days are entitled to receive this hourly rate in addition to their contract salary it's it's at the bottom of letter c on page 22 
Uh, thinking back on when we uh, negotiated that a few years ago, um, there was an issue with uh, elementary classes either being um, wholly or in part sp or split into multiple other classes, and there wasn't really a mechanism to uh, compensate those elementary teachers for this added workload all of a sudden that's going to dis disrupt their plans and their day. And so that is for like, uh, if they have to take all or part of a class for an entire day, that's what C is. And, and H, is it H? H is like covering for uh, like a temporary, like one class period or an hour or two. So if they only covered for one hour, they would get paid their normal rate, but if they covered for the whole day, they would go back to that rate? So if those the, kids stayed so in the, there for the whole day? Well, the 3058, I mean, and we can, we can certainly, ha uh, I, I'm, I'm okay with making it their hourly rate for C, but uh, C is if, uh, the, is, is on top of their normal pay, they also get this 30, because they're taking on extra students for the entire day, and that's that's where they came from. And th at the time, thirty dollars was uh, uh, more than class cover pay, which was eighteen seventy five. So um, we would be good with just making it their hourly pay, so it matches. That would be fine too. So basically, we would be moving that part of letter C down to H as well. Is that, I mean, that's what I thought Yeah. I heard. That makes so, sense. So if they took on three extra kids in a day, they'd get basically paid their hourly rate on top of their normal pay for that entire day? If that were the reality, yes. That's, I don't, I don't think there's anywhere where it's logistically possible to divide your class in sets of three. Um, but yes, if you're taking on extra kids, we believe we deserve we the we deserve the extra pay. It's unplanned. Most of us don't have even the desks or chairs in our rooms for that. We plan for our students, the assignments that they need to do, and it is an extremely difficult on the fly change to make to accommodate new students. And I appreciate that. And I'm not saying it's not. I I just have to make sure that I have enough information to make sure Hammer can calculate what cost would look like in a situation like that. Right, so that's, we're clarifying that, because class cover, some of the language is what's tripping us up here. Class cover, letter H, is really like when you're covering during your plan time. Letter C, like Johnny said earlier, elementary, it's not feasible to give up the 25 minutes to go cover. I mean, that the schedules don't really work that way for teachers to go in every 25 minutes. So if they're in that situation, they're splitting one third grade class with the other two third grade classes for the entire day so that kids are covered. Um, and that's, I think, where some of the language is just getting confusing. That yeah. we're, that's letter part. H is talking when you're giving up your plan time to go cover. Letter C, can we can combine some of that. We just need to clarify plan time cover versus full day cover, I think. But I will. I know at the middle schools this year, it happened uh, DCMS several times. They couldn't find anyone to cover that class and the art teacher's class was sent to PE all day. And those PE teachers took on those art classes with their normal PE classes all day long. So it's, it's happening elementary and middle school. I can't vouch for high school, but I know DCMS, it happened multiple times. And 
also in the labeling, uh, C is direct instruction. So if they're taking on, if it's an elementary teaching teacher who teaches third grade and she takes half of a another third grade class, theoretically, she'd just be teaching more third graders. Yeah. yeah I, again, the only reason I bring it up is because we wouldn't have to provide some clarification because I don't. Are you all? Would you? So I guess now my question is, would you be requesting that the entire group that's listed in letter C also be changed to their hourly rate for all of those other things up there? Or we just make a clarification that the elementary teachers would be the ones being paid that different rate than what's listed on letter C? Well, right now, um uh, I mean, uh, we would like—I mean, we would like to always pay teachers more. So we'd like to make it their their pay. I mean, if you're asking me, that's what I'm going to say, right? Uh, <laughs> I mean, if you don't ask for it, you don't get it, right? Uh, so yeah, I mean, in my head, there's not a lot of difference between covering a class or taking on extra kids for a day. I mean, it's still hours of work that you uh, weren't planning on and. Uh, you're going to have to make up later somehow. Um, so I think it's justified. I think I heard you say then you would be requesting to move H and C to the teacher's normal hourly rate for all of the things listed in them? Correct. Okay. Do you have any other questions before we move on? Okay. Um, I guess next we'll move on to uh, some positions that we'd either like to either add a whole new position or just uh, make a change to an existing position. Uh, right now, the color guard uh, uh, extra duty pay or supplemental pay, I think, is $2,000. The color guard starts in, like, February, preparing for the next marching season and then goes all the way through marching season so it's almost an entire year and they're getting paid of, of like outside of class rehearsals uh, and practices um, and then they you know travel with the marching band and and, and perform at the marching band uh, uh, performances it, it just it's a it's a mountain of work and two thousand dollars is just woefully inadequate um, so we're proposing to move that to uh, $4,000 to put it in line with the drill team. Um, I believe that reflects the amount of work. Just as a question, has the, the amount of time that they put in on Claire Guard significantly changed since the last time it was set? Because didn't we just set this at 2000 last year? It, the color guard did not significantly change at that time. I mean, it went up a little bit because everything did, but it, but it, um, it was, we, because we overhauled the entire thing. It was something that just didn't get looked at real closely at the time. So it did go up, but not very much. Um, and the, uh, in, in speaking to the, uh, people who, who knew more about color guard duty and things like that since then, it's obvious that it, it, it should have gone up more then. And so we're just trying to correct that going forward.
Uh, additionally, um, we, if you, if uh, you'd like, we can produce like uh, how many hours the color guard puts in. That's been all uh, collected, and, and so we, we can present that to you if you like. But but it's it's a ton of work. I, uh, High school administration has been in on this conversation as well. I know the instructor has gone to Mr. Steiner and given documentation of everything that's happened. So they also came to us asking for help in pay. All right, so last year, um, I, I don't remember which middle school it was. At one of the middle schools, the Quiz Bowl had uh, two teachers uh, coaching um, and one of them was paid the stipend, which I believe is $2,000, and the other one was paid $14 an hour. Um, and that person essentially functioned as a, a, an assistant coach for the Quiz Bowl team, so we'd just like to add a position for a Quiz Bowl assistant coach and pay it at $1,000, which p puts it in line with other coaches and assistant coaches. And, Any questions on that? Okay, um, so this one currently, um, the assistant uh, band coaches, um, or coaches, assistant band directors, sorry, uh, are paid a flat $5,000 stipend uh, and for the amount of work that they put in, because um, it's all year. I mean, they they have all the marching season and you know before marching season even starts, and then all of marching season, which extends into November, and then they start basketball season like right away. It's December, I think, is the f when the first games start, and they they go to all the basketball games. Um, I think it's something like twenty games that a the, the band directors end up uh, uh, directing the pep band at, uh, which is just an enormous amount of time. Because I say 20 games, it's really 20 nights. It's 40 games because it's, uh, or thereabouts, because it's almost all double headers. Uh, so we want to add a pep band uh, supplemental pay because, I mean, to cover that all those extra pep bands, uh, especially during uh, basketball season, just because he, it's an enormous amount of time and they have, we don't feel like they've been justly compensated before now anyway. So how many positions would that include? Just one or would there be multiple positions for that? Four. So the director of bands now gets $9,000. Correct. And what is the assistant? It's 5,000. So are those, so then they would also then get 3,000 additional, but when they, the 20 nights, don't they normally split up like who does pet band? So they're not, they're not all doing it 20 nights. Don't they take turns? It's, so like how would that it's, it's pretty close to, it's, it's like 18 or 19 nights still. And Holly Ann can speak to it better than I can. There's always three of us at pet band, so at most, we get two nights off, usually in a season. It's also worth pointing out that the head football coach, which is, you know, football season, it's nine thousand dollars, and the band director. What we're asking the band director to do is to uh, direct at every uh, football game, and then also you know, 20 evenings beyond that and not compensating them, you know. I'm not sure that's an apples to apples in the sense of just um, the 
practices and some of that stuff different. So, and, and I don't want to get into that, but it, it is a little bit different. But still, the look is, in addition to the 9000 and the 5000 that they already get, they would all each get $3,000 additional is what, you're, is what that is, correct? Correct. Um, but, but it is worth noting that the, the amount of time that they put in that $5,000 is peanuts is for to cover everything. It's, it's just woefully inadequate. Okay, um, if you'll copy and paste it up there, Sheck had emailed us a request to add a position for wrestling, and we have no problem with adding that. I literally took from, I believe it was Steiner's email that he sent to you that you forwarded on to us for notice. Um, it was an issue between the boys and the girls programs now having their own technical seasons within Keisha and needing... Um, I believe it's the head girl's assistant is the title, the position that's needed, and we have no problem with that. For the people online, Angie was asking clarification on what the exact dollar amount would be. I'll defer to Sheck. It's it is the assistant head is what the position was requested for when I sent the original email. And again, it was for concerns as as our girls program continues to grow exponentially over the last two years. Uh, two years ago was the first that Keisha actually recognized it. And so it has grown um, drastically, and they developed a plan, and it, it was sent on with the request to do some restructuring, move a coach over from the boys' program to the girls' program, and then hire another head assistant that could oversee that girls' program. Um, and so it was a head assistant position. And now both the boys' and the girls' wrestling program will be staffed identically moving forward. And, and at some point, it, it, it's just what it is. At some point, there's probably going to be a need for an entire girls program area, uh, all the whole thing. So, and that those conversations have begun as well. So, And like we said, we have no, we have no problem. I mean, this sounds like a kind of a no-brainer. We should probably have this. No, yeah, we just we pulled this from the email that we got to yeah.
as far as uh, salary and compensation and things, this is this is what we wanted to present and go over today. Unfortunately, and, and thank you for sharing the information, um, but like I said at the beginning, the when you and Hammer sit down and start really putting numbers together and complete that little spreadsheet that you have put together over the years to try to put numbers to all these things, it's hard to even have a response. Um, obviously, as you know, in the past history, usually there's a percentage amount of funds that are allocated for things like this. And then literally um, we give the union the ability to split those funds up how you see fit and slice that pie, so to speak, as Hammer likes to say, um, how you want to. Um, so in, until those conversations have been had, it's hard for me to even have a response other than thank you for presenting the information. Yeah, we. I, when you said Hammer wasn't going to be here, we considered just canceling, but then we thought, well, we can at least start the conversation and and tell you where we're where we're coming from and what we're thinking. And and honestly, this this truly allows for us to do what you've wanted to do this whole time and get this out in front of people. But now um, I would be one hundred percent fine with you scheduling time with Hammer to start that actual process so when we do come back we have more of those numbers honed in on if if your team is okay with that as well i i, I believe that's fine uh and it'll give us an idea of like uh cost and budget and that so uh i'd be more than happy to schedule the hammer and come back with like what he and i kind of figured out it's going to cost Uh, I really don't want to end this here because we have a lot more to talk about. But since this was our plan, can we talk it, talk us, <laughs> caucus for like 10 to 15 minutes so we can kind of make a game plan of where to go from here since we have the time set aside? Absolutely. I, I mean, we have 11 to 4 yeah. reserved on yeah. our <laughs> calendars. So um, if you want to do so, and then we can do. Uh, any idea, I mean, just from our perspective, what you think you might want to come back with so we can do the same thing? Um, we know that we have questions about calendar and how that's created. Okay. Um, and then some of the time proposals that we had put in our letter. Um, we know we need to talk about evaluations. Um, those are kind of the two for today. Oh, possibly teacher rights from our letter as well. But I think calendar is what we need to hash out first. Potentially coming back to leave, yes. Potentially. No promises there. Okay. So start start with calendar questions and then possibly if you guys can talk about evaluation system maybe and explain the changes and where we need to go can we have that so here i can make that one real quick okay it's already been determined that we're going back to e4e with certified staff for next year and we will use next year to take it through the negotiations process properly and vet it out and again that goes back to a misunderstanding Apparently, on my perspective, after my first conversation with attorneys on what needed to or not needed to be negotiated in that area, and so we have just decided that it's going to be cleanest f for us to just go back to E4E and deal with it through the course of next year's negotiations without trying to cram something in right now. And, and we do appreciate the fact that you were willing to bring it to the table, um, but it just for time's sake and understanding, it'd just be easiest for that to occur. That's exactly what we were going to ask for. So that was easy. It's highlighted green and done. 
Do I get a gold star for that one? <laughs> Maybe two. <laughs> Uh, we're going to caucus for 15 minutes. Yeah, uh, 15 minutes, we'll come back and uh, uh, go forward.
Okay, welcome back. Um, we uh, determined that we'd like to uh, discuss the calendar and uh, specifically centering on uh, parent-teacher conferences and um, an issue we have with that. So uh, I guess my concern would be is is was that noticed and I think we have provisions already specified for the days that are set by the district and what input there is and how it's lined out with the union is that accurate um, my understanding when you change um, hours and amount of work, it is an automated, automatic negotiated agreement, uh, part of the negotiated process. And uh, the changing of parent-teacher conferences is a change in hours and amount of work for any teacher. So the total number of, con it increased the total number of contract days for teachers by changing parent-teacher conferences, is that? You change the hours and amount of work. When a parent-teacher conference is set, it's on average you're going to change the process that teachers have to prepare for that, things they have to gather, work they have to do to be prepared for that, contacting the parents before the conference, after the conferences, and that kind of thing. So that's where we're talking about the hours and amount of work is just changed inevitably because we've had, instead of two parent-teacher conferences that you prepare for, now it's four. Not, not the days, it's the prep time that changes it. Okay. And, and I mean, and logically, just uh, the ability to contact parents during your plan time specifically is uh, limited. So parental contact, additional parental contact would happen most likely outside of school hours. So. We would just love to start the conversation with why they were added. Um, why the change in what days happened. Uh, there's a lot of questions that no one seems to know why yet, so. We asked um, elementary, middle, and high school administrators to touch base with their teachers. On. And then we met with the high school committee on parent-teacher conferences, and they provided um, the what they would like, how it was set up. It went right back to what was set up before with the high school, um, the way their parent-teacher conferences were set. Um, it didn't increase the in amount of, um, like the, the amount of time that was spent um, for two conferences is just divided into four, so the teacher contact time doesn't change. The um, amount of conferences that teachers have doesn't change. Um, it just went back to the old high school um, conference piece. The concept was um, to meet the high school needs better on um, quarterly classes because they didn't have an opportunity uh, or, uh, no, they always have an opportunity to meet with parents, but it wasn't scheduled. So if it's in September and February and I have a second quarter class, I don't have a parent-teacher conference. So um, it was really driven from the high school feedback that we got. Um, the elementary world um, was really, we'll still meet with the kids. Um, but it will be in two, two sections, so we might meet with half the kids in September and half the kids in November, um, depending on student needs. And if the teacher determines that we might need to meet with a, um, a, a parent or a student twice, then they could schedule that accordingly. So that's where that came about, just trying to meet the teacher needs with parent-teacher conferences, it adjusted a little bit, um, and that was the feedback that we got. Just to clarify, so elementary, K-5, not every kid will have conferences all four times? No. 
so all students, the expectation is the same that as we currently have. So all students would still be have a parent-teacher conference twice throughout a year. But the teacher would be able to determine um, is that am I going to meet with this student in um, September and then maybe April because that's what that student needs or maybe I'm going to meet with them in November and April or September and February like it would be up to the teacher. So the amount of times that the kids would attend conferences doesn't change. It would still be once a semester unless that teacher decides that you know what I really do want to meet with you four times or three times and then they would just schedule that accordingly but it would be based on the teacher need and the student need but the expectation would be once per semester just like now and then what about middle school level and then so for Okay, so for everyone, the expectation is one conference a semester unless they need more. Mm -hmm. And what is the plan for, like, tracking that? I, I, I will fully admit I haven't had a conversation with my principal about this in a couple months, but there was not an understanding of that the last time I spoke to him. So I'm hoping that there's a better understanding now. I, I didn't follow up with him before school got out, but like that was not understood when calendars were first put out uh, to people. And so I'm just, we're trying to wrap our heads around what all of this means and, 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 and this how, is, to, how to track it and I, oh boy. Yeah, the, yeah, this is the first that we've heard that it was, like it would be split. Like it's, as far as we know, it was just, two additional conferences. Sorry, that's the understanding that I was getting from our building leadership uh, information about the calendar and the, the conferences is that we would meet with every kid all four times and that the first time would be a certain kind of meeting and then the second time a certain and third and fourth. So that's why this is a concern for us because it does change. It is important for us to be clear and not have misunderstandings so that people are not doing more work than other people. I also have a question. Has this calendar actually been brought to our bargaining unit to um, to like look at and review before it's an official calendar for parents? As far as the members of the, so from my understanding, DCNEA has the opportunity to have seven members on that calendar committee it would be up to those seven members that you all appointed to that committee to be a part of just the certain pieces that you would be um, part of. Um, there, there are certain parameters that are met with the beginning dates and end dates, I believe, but the, the internal workings of the calendar are set by the district. I believe, though, that it is um, pretty much a unilateral change for our hours of the duty days for those uh, parent-teacher conferences, which then means it's a mandatory negotiated item. And I believe it's KSA 72-23, uh, sorry, 2235B1 and B5, that, that I'm, if I'm reading that portion correctly.
So I believe that the original the original concern was that because there was going to be four for every student, that it was going to increase the preparation time, which was increasing the hours and amounts of work for the teacher. Um, hearing Tammy's response that it's not four for every student, it's two for every student, just like it currently is. Um, so then the teacher would have discretion to not have to put in that extra time for those which then would not change the hours and amounts of work in the calendar because we're not asking for any more time put in. If you had 30 students, you would still only be doing two conferences for those 30 students. Then I would propose we need to add some language to clarify that in the contract because the amount of confusion that's happened already, that I can assure you, it w I don't know it'll be in a contract, but that information will be sent out and it will be clarified. I can assure you because I do not want to do this all next year. Forgive us if we're a little apprehensive about that. I think we'd much rather have it in writing. Yeah, especially since I know that, um, yeah, the calendar, the dates inside that calendar, yeah, you guys have the rights to do that. But when we are doing things like adding parent-teacher conference days, it is changing, and it should be offered to the um, bargaining unit to approve those things without a unilateral change. The other thing that concerns me about this is that I, I realize that theoretically, if uh, we're uh, going to be required to conference with a student one time uh, during the semester, so only half of the conferences or, or what have you, the, to me, that sounds like an increase in documentation and uh, proving that we met with the kid and um, chasing down people who didn't show. And I, I mean, I this sounds like it's going to be additional work. And then beyond that, if you're a teacher who does teach quarter classes, then you're going to meet with all your kids every time. And so that is an increase in work. Because uh, if I have if I have 25 students every quarter, then I'm meeting with 25 students every quarter, not. 12 and 13 or, or whatever. So so what we're creating now, even if we split it, is an inequity between some teachers versus others. It was, it was coming. I think there's obviously some things we need to clean up with that, but at this point, I think we can come together to start talking about them, but I don't think we're going to solve anything right this moment. Well, I mean, okay, we're, we're uh, um, I think we're okay with starting the conversation, but I just think that there are some things that we need to hash out before next year because what we're, uh, where we're coming from is that, that, uh, we're not necessarily opposed to conferences. That's not it at all. It's just that when you increase the amount and hours of work, then it's something that needs to be, yeah, discussed and negotiated. So, yeah, and um, I won't be next year for the first time in five years, but but I can see where they're coming, uh, where that would be additional work for teachers who teach quarter classes. So yeah, I, to to Matt's point, I when you first stated it from your perspective, is it made me l view it from a different perspective myself. And then with Cam with Tammy's clarification, I thought, okay, that makes sense. We can get somewhere. But but I could potentially see how somebody with quarter classes would then have to do it 
potentially four times instead of two. So I, I do agree that we may need to put some more thought into how, how we look at that um, and potentially put something um, together to make sure that we have all of those things covered. I'm, I'm not prepared to do that right here on the spot because I want to have Dr. Springston involved in that conversation and Tammy as well because I'll be honest, I was not heavily involved in the completion of that calendar. So I need to get some background as well. And to Angie's point, I know I was looking at some, reviewing some emails and I know the middle school has done some work on topics per, so there is a little confusion there, so. So I guess the the last thing I would ask is, in knowing that these things are going to come up and that these things are discussed throughout year the the year, um, and we do try to run these things through like BLT, DLT, those types of things to get input and feedback on them. As Tammy mentioned, I I would kind of I don't know, almost request that some of you from your side request that you're on those BLTs and things for your building so you're hearing these things before we get to this point. Because I know that calendar had to have gone through a certain process to get to where it was. Is that accurate, Tammy? So the calendar, um, again, the calendar committee does the bookends and vacations. Okay, so then from the district office, and they go with the, like this year, the process for like the PD dates were done based on the um, feedback from the uh, steering committee. So, and those have teacher building reps from every building um, on the steering committee based on what they needed from um, professional development. Um, example, they prefer it like instead of right before Christmas break, it'd be after Christmas break or that kind of stuff. So all that feedback came in from there. Um, so that gets set then. Um, and then, like I said, parent-teacher conferences, we went through that process. I'd have to go back actually to look to see what was taken to DLT on that specifically because I couldn't tell you right now, oh, yeah, it was this or, or whatever. Um, I was going back through to try to find um, like who I met with and information when stuff got sent out but um so yeah it goes through a process which is honestly different because before outside of the calendar committee then we just set it and it was done so so we've really actually engaged teachers way more in the process than we ever have the last couple of years I, I i guess my only point is it'd be be a lot smoother to to work these things out why we're going through that process instead of now so I'm not on BLT, but <laughs> the two sitting to my left that are are saying the conversation about conferences never happened in their building. So my my question is there's, or I guess not question, but concerns about is every building presenting the same topics? Or, I mean, I, I know there's a lot that happens at DLT or admin meetings to, to disseminate information. Are, are there processes in place to make sure each building is truly getting feedback from teachers on those through BLT or whatever means they see? Because if the BLT members in one building are saying uh, that that conversation never happened, that's a concern. And, and again, I wasn't involved in the creation of it, so I, I've got to ask questions, which is why uh, I kind of put Tammy on the spot. But, um, and again, Maybe maybe it was something as simple as, yes, we can set four days, but there was not a thought about the hours and amounts of work piece. It literally it could have been an, a, 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 a miss in interpretation of what it meant between, because just like I mentioned personally, 
my mind immediately went to contract days, but when um, she spoke about the preparation for four of those versus the preparation for two of those, it made it, it gave me a different perspective on it. Um, so it, again, we'll have some further conversation and try to get some things in place to make sure that there, it, it is equitable. Uh, it's, it's also worth pointing out that the, um, part of the reason why we're, we're staying with the E4E E is that it was pointed out that there, the, the process wasn't followed. Um, and, and, well, part of the reason why that process, we say that process wasn't followed is that on the DLT, there are no high school teachers. Um, there's an, uh, a, an instructional coach and the admin from the high school, I, and that's it. And not to say that instructional coaches aren't teachers, that's what I'm getting at. What I'm saying is that there aren't any classroom teachers from the high school on the DLT. And I, I posit that if we had had like a, a quarter a teacher who who taught quarter classes that maybe that would have been discussed before now. Uh, I mean, I think one of the things we've established is there's obviously some breakdowns here and there. There's no need to try to throw anybody under the bus or yeah. let's figure out what the what the issue is. Um, I know with the high school, you know, we can always work on getting more teachers. I do have a perspective as a former high school teacher who taught four different preps quarterly. You know, I understand that. Um, I was thinking just back, because we just went away from it two years ago, didn't put much thought into it either, as opposed to it's just what we were doing for the first 21 years of my tenure in 443. So I apologize for not bringing that up as well, but I think there's several things we need to talk about, you know, and probably can move on from this at this point, because um, we got a lot of topics, I think. Um, okay, so just for clarity, do we want um, we want to table this for the moment and come back to it a little later? Uh, well, I don't honestly. I don't think there's anything to table. We we as a district who set that calendar are going to get together and we're going to figure out like what clarity needs to be provided based on the information that you provided to us. So we appreciate that information and that perspective. Um, it's it's technically not a negotiable item and we will figure out a way for it to be equitable so it doesn't change the hours and amounts of work of people. I, we still believe it'll change the hours and amount of work, like even if it's split, because you're still going to be pre preparing for four conferences. Um, it's, if it, hours and amount of work are, are negotiated every year, it doesn't have to be in the letter. Um, I mean, so uh, that's that's where we're at. It's it's uh, it is a negotiable item. It it, it needs to be negotiated because uh, hours and amount of work are changing. I, I mean, and what we're asking to negotiate is some language added to I believe it's Article Four. I was looking at it earlier for conferences that there's language written so every building is doing it the same way, and there's not. Teachers know what's expected of them. We're, if conferences are going to be four times, fine. If, if you're saying we can't negotiate that, fine. Then let's get some language so that everybody knows what the expectations are. And I understand if you don't want language today, but and that's I'm clarifying. That's what we're asking for is language. And that's what I want us to bring back to okay. you. I, the, the, that's what I'm clarifying because based on what I thought was said was, no, we won't be discussing this again. Not. I'm just clarifying we can discuss language to add to the contract to clarify what those four conferences mean for everyone at a later date. We understand you need to consult more people. Okay. Yeah, when I said table, that's for now.
we caucus for like five minutes. <laughs> Seriously, like just step out in the hallway. Okay, um, what we uh, determined is we, we came to this meeting prepared to talk about salary, uh, and uh, we did that, and we moved past it a little bit, and I don't really feel prepared to move on to something else, uh, at least not to handle it with anything beyond, well, we'll have to look at it, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, so... Um, what I think we'd like to do is um, 
try to schedule a next meeting and wrap this one up. The, the, the only other thing I will let you know, and I, I was preparing to possibly discuss a response to the National Board Certification today as well if we got to that point. Um, we don't need to because I understand that Lisa's not here um, for very good reason, um, but I just want you to know that I did drop that response proposal into the shared drive. If y'all want to take a look at it before the next meeting, feel free to do so. Um, I actually just created a document that has a link to the copy so we don't have to keep putting copy of copy of copy in back and forth in these different locations. So it, it's, it's in there, so just FYI. And you know, uh, the, the document with the uh, new positions and things, I'll put that in there too. All right, so we, uh, we're looking at dates and uh, between, uh, I, I'm, I have nationals basically from the 10th through the 17th. Um, before that doesn't work real well, and so we're looking at like in the week after that, so 19, 20, 21 of June. We realize that Dr. Springson and uh, Hammer aren't here, so maybe. Yeah, that Monday through Wednesday, 19, 20, 21. I mean, if you need to check with your team, we've got some time to email back and forth. <laughs> Eight to noon works. Yep. Yep.
Uh, okay, well then, uh, thank you. We'll be back uh, June 19 at 8 a.m. <laughs>